This is the summit of Mount Harrison, one of the higher peaks in the Albion Range, a prominent north-south trending mountain range in south central Idaho. It's a smoky, hazy day with the wildfires in the west, but nonetheless, there's some pretty spectacular views here. This is the, the view to the west, which probably isn't too noteworthy. The, the town of Oakley's down there somewhere, uh, and the, the Cassia area, Minicasha area with Burley and some other towns. As we swing around to the the south, the big prominent mountain in the distance there is Cache Peak, which rises to over 10,000 feet. Uh, there's also a, a valley up there that you might just be able to make out um, where there's, uh, there's a couple lakes uh, tucked up in that valley that were, uh, that valley was carved out by glaciers and those are just little depressions or a glacial cirque left behind that's filled with water. That's known as Independence Lakes. Uh, we're gonna, this is the uh, fire lookout tower here up on the peak at Mount Harrison. Uh, this is one of the few peaks that you, well, it's the biggest peak you can drive to up a paved road here um, at the top of Mount Harrison. We're gonna go over here to the southeast side and see uh, some pretty interesting features with these rocks um, and also this landscape here, this pretty tremendous landscape. As you walk over here to the southeast, everything just kind of drops away into this big bowl. So the story here is, even though this is facing more or less to the south or the southeast, um, during the last ice age, you know, 20 to 15,000 years ago, enough snow accumulated here. The Albians get a tremendous amount of snow being this large topographic feature where Pacific storms drop a lot of their, their moisture as snow up here. Um, even though this faces to the southeast, this slope was able to uh, accumulate enough snow that eventually that snow compacted into ice. And that ice, once it was sufficiently massive, actually started to slide down the valley uh, due to gravity and with its own weight there. Now, it doesn't look like the glacier got very far, but the glacial ice plucking and eroding the rocks beneath it is what created the sort of steep-sided uh, kind of mini cirque, I guess you could call it, that we see below us here. We're gonna walk over um, a little bit further to the east here. We're kind of on the top of the ridge line here. The rocks at the top here, you can see in a lot of places along the ridge line here, they're kind of busted up, uh, a lot of broken faces. Um, and because of the extreme conditions up here with fr freeze thaw cycles in the winter, uh, that really breaks up the rock and then the rocks tumble. So you can see there's a big slope of angular broken rocks down there with the pine trees. That's all talus that's actually accumulated due to rock fall in this area. Uh, let's look now at the rocks themselves. Um, and all the rocks up here is a type of rock called quartzite. It's the same quartzite you see above Lake Cleveland, which is a glacial lake uh, just to the north of us. Um, these are really hard rocks. These, these are dominated by quartz. These were once sandstones that were then uh, heated and compacted with pressure and fused together to form these very, very tough resistant rocks called quartzite. But nonetheless, despite the, the, the strength of these rocks, the ice was able to gouge out and s substantially erode uh, this landscape. In places, you can actually see, like right here, we have a surface of the quartzite where there's some pebbles in it. So in places, rather than just being dominated by sand grains, there were some larger pieces of pebbles that were uh, deposited originally. These, of course, have been fused to the rock as well uh, as metamorphism occurred. Here's another, another face here, but you can see these individual, you know, up to a centimeter or so, little pebble grains in this quartzite. Um, let's walk down, because this unit of quartzite, which I believe is Proterozoic in age, so maybe eight to 900 million years old, it's a, it's a difficult unit to to get a handle on in terms of age, um, has a really interesting story that I probably wouldn't figure it out on my own, uh, but other geologists have been able to kind of piece together. We can also see here in places, um, it's incredibly kind of sparkly. So this is actually mica. These are 
little bits of muscovite mica, a mineral, probably because it was a little bit of mud mixed in with the sand and the little bit of gravel that we've seen. And so that mud, once it was heated, metamorphosed, uh, it recrystallized as the mineral muscovite, this type of mica here, which formed this very attractive kind of shiny surface. So if we come down here, kind of for our, our grand finale, and this area is pretty steep, we can see the sides of this unit. So we actually look at these quartzites end on, we can actually see uh, the very strong layering in the rock. So this is all dipping off to the west. But the real cool thing about this rock unit is it has been completely inverted. So these rocks were all laid down horizontally as sedimentary rocks are, but this quartzite sometime after it was deposited and probably after it became a quartzite possibly even, has been completely flipped over. And you might ask yourself, well, how do we know that? And the reason we've been able to piece that together or other geologists have, but I'll include myself as a collective we, um, is if you look, let's see, where's a good spot? Here we go. Um, if you look at some of these lines cutting through the rocks, um, like right here, these are actually called cross beds. Now cross beds occur usually in one of two environments, either in uh, streams or rivers as the sand and, and sediment gets moved around. It creates um, troughs which can migrate over time as the stream moves laterally back and forth. Um, and the other place we might see them is in sand dunes or windblown deposits. In this case, these uh, tend to look more like they're stream deposits. And cross beds have a very specific geometry to them, which in this case has allowed us to see that these cross beds have actually been flipped over. The other place I was looking at, I think it's over here, maybe up this way. Um, I believe shows a little bit of these. Sometimes we get cross beds that look more like troughs. And there's places in here where you can kind of convince yourself that these uh, are going the opposite way. They're, instead of being a trough shaped like a, a smiley face, they're actually inverted and kind of upside down. Um, so kind of a cool place to wander around and explore, as long as you're kind of careful with your footwork here. But again, all these little lines in here are interpreted as cross beds and they uh, have been looked at and scrutinized with enough detail that this entire unit has been flipped over. The Alvian Mountains record a really extensive period of not just heating and metamorphism but faulting. So these rocks have been squished in the past because they're so old uh, due to mountain building events in the region, uh, shoved over the top of um, younger rocks and faulting. Um, and so all of those events combined, uh, it shouldn't be too much of a stretch then to, to buy into the fact that these have actually been flipped over a little bit. So again, spectacular geology and scenery here uh, in South Central Idaho at the summit of Mount Harrison.